Yo, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Jeezy TV. This is the first video of the day. We are back at the college room, you know, the dorm. So, it's nice to be back. I actually really like this setup. I honestly prefer it to my other setups, but we are going to talk about the 56th overall episode, the fourth of the fifth season of The Sopranos, All Happy Families. Pretty interesting stuff. There's some new characters, some characters that aren't going to be a part of the series anymore, some characters that died. You know, it's always an important episode when stuff like that happens. So, yeah, it's going to be super interesting. Let's get into it. So, kind of talking about the synopsis, you know, kind of what happened. So, in New York, Lorraine and Jason are murdered by Billy and Joey Peeps after they refuse to give their collections to Johnny. They're giving it to them to Little Carmine. And there's this weird, like, power swing that's kind of going on with the Lupertazzi family. And, obviously, a super interesting dynamic where they're kind of fighting over who's going to take over the family and be the new boss. So, yeah. So, obviously, you know, Billy and Joey Peeps work for Johnny. So, Johnny Zack. So, if, you know, if the money doesn't go to him, we're going to have problems. And they continue to violate that rule. And they get killed because of it. So, little Carmine is advised by fellow capo Rusty Milio to take aggressive action. Like, if he wants to assert himself as the ruler of the family, he should be the successor. He's the son of him. Hit the father. So, yeah. The son of the old boss. So, Tony advises his capos and soldiers not to get involved in the New York feud. That is a completely separate family. You don't want to do too much there. Um, there's quite a bit going on in this episode, though. So, Feach comes in to see Tony and regales the youngster, mo younger mobsters with stories from his criminal career, including one when Tony and Jackie Pearl Sr. established themselves by robbing his card game. So, yeah, there's a lot of really funny parallels when they were talking about that. And it's cool to get people's different perspectives on that because that's like a huge event in like Tony Soprano's life. You know, that was monumental for him. So, Tony laughs at this, but Feach asks if he can run the game once again. Um, Tony allows him to supervise and get 20% of its profits. So, yeah, going back to their old ways. And Tony even kind of like saying sorry honestly i have a crazy headphone dent that is so fucking annoying i can't i can't fucking my hair is so fucked because i wear headphones dude it's so annoying but anyway uh at the card game features jokes and anecdotes annoy tony but generate uproarious laughter from his crew and you kind of realize like they're kind of fake laughing at him like what what's going on here so um, in an argument, Carmela has told Tony that he has no friends, just flunkies who curry flavor because he is the boss. Curry favor because he is the boss. And that is kind of true to an extent. He doesn't really have real friends. Like, at the end of the day, it all comes down to business, business, business. Like, what are we going to do to help the business? So as a test, Tony makes a feeble joke to the card players and observes their overly hearty laughter. And he is just kind of, like, disappointed, maybe? I don't know. He has a weird feeling. So... Features hired men carjack the guest at the wedding of the daughter of Ira Freed, a close friend of Tony's, and sell the vehicles to men working for Johnny. Like, what the hell is Feach doing? You get just get out of prison, you're doing too much, and obviously he gets that karma coming back to him. So, yeah. Um, Tony then recalls the joke he told at the card game and realizes the only person not laughing was Feach. Like, Feach has a distaste towards him. He does not like Tony. It's almost like a, a old head not liking the newcomers, you know, type of deal. Dude, that is so bad. That is awful, dude. That That's so bad. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Um, he reluctantly decides that Feach, although well-liked and respected, has to be dealt with in some manner. Tony sends Christopher and Benny to Feach's house where they trick him into hiding a truckload of flat screen TVs in his garage in return for payment, plus a TV for himself. And it doesn't seem to be... A coincidence that the following day, a parole officer visits Feech and asks about the flat screen in his living room, then asks to see his garage. Feech has to comply. He's not like, no, 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 don't go in my garage. And he kind of like, like, oh, why would you want to see my garage? He says that kind of thing. But I'm pretty sure Tony sent the parole officer. Why are my teeth so fucking crooked? Am I losing my mind? Alright, whatever. So, what am I doing? So, on the bus back to prison, he gazes at the outside world. And this is interesting because I think this is the last time we're going to see Feech on this show. Which is a really weird thing, but 
Whatever. Um, Dr. Murphy finds that Tony's left a basket of expensive toiletries in a bathrobe in her waiting room again and attempt to get with her and give her gifts and win her love over. Later, stressing the misspelled words, she reads his gift card to her own therapist, Dr. Kupferberg. Yeah, Tony is just a very surface-level man, you know. Uh, Tony apologizes for his outburst during their last session. Kupferberg tells Melfi the gift represents ablution. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what that means if you're a Christian. I'm sure you know, but whatever. We can move on. So... AJ is having a difficult time in school and disrespects Carmela. He just doesn't like his mother. His father's moved out of the house. He wants to move in with his father, but his mom's not allowing it. And his dad doesn't want him to do it either because his mother would then be alone, you know, with his daughter off at college and all that stuff. So she and Tony visits AJ's guidance counselor, Robert Wegler. Uh, Carmela partly blames AJ's poor academic performance on her separation from Tony. I mean, that can hurt him a little bit, but I mean, all along, he's kind of been a flunky. He's kind of been a troublemaker in school we've kind of known this about aj for a long time um but uh tony buys aj a new nissan xterra as a motivational tool to get better grades motivational tool saying that carmelo will keep the keys until his grades improve you gotta you gotta pass your classes you know to get this car it's not oh you gotta get a's you gotta be an ace you gotta ace your report card no you gotta just pass your classes <laughs> yeah i guess that's the bar that they said academically in that house, obviously. Uh, what's Meadows a lot different, you know, going to Columbia and stuff. So, yeah, uh, AJ asks his mother if he can attend a Mudvayne concert in New York with his friends. I really like how this show does cultural references. That's so funny. It's like, oh, can I go to Mudvayne? And then they're talking about Beatles, the Beatles, all that stuff. Um, Carmela agrees on the condition that he spent spend the night at Meadow's apartment. However, AJ Carl calls Mel Meadow to tell her that he will not be coming, and she reluctantly agrees to cover for him. You know, when his mother calls, he's, she'll be like, yeah, he's asleep. Yeah, he's here. So, yeah. We all know he wants to party. He wants to go to the hotel with his friends and kind of live the night up, which is uh, kind of understandable, but, like, you're, you gotta listen to your mom, dude. Like, you've already done shitty in school, all this other stuff. So... Staying in a hotel, AJ and his friends get drunk and high. Uh, the next morning, AJ wakes with his face glued to the carpet and his eyebrows shaved off and then redrawn with a permanent marker. I mean, classic high school, classic teenage boy kind of shenanigans going on there, I guess. In the ensuing argument at home, AJ sells a false story, which Tony appears willing to buy. He, he didn't drink just a couple of beers, guys. Like, he got blacked out. He got fucked up, you know. Um, Carmela blames herself for AJ's actions and says Tony should take AJ to live with him. Just take him, you know. Like, I don't want to live with this burden any longer. This is my kid. He's being a, becoming a fucking failure. Like, I don't want to have to deal with this. I already have to deal with a divorce, you know. Um, at Tony's, AJ bonds with his father, Tony being arty as they watch TV until Tony sends him upstairs to do his homework. And this could be an interesting turn in the dynamics for the Soprano family. I really think so. Uh, you know, AJ you know, bonding with guys like Artie and Tony B and becoming kind of a part of Tony's crew almost. I feel like this could definitely foreshadow some things for the future for the show. I think that could be really cool. Um, anyway, uh, Wegler invites Carmela to lunch to kind of discuss some strategies, I guess. She discusses AJ's troubles as well as her own. I mean, obviously the academic advisor is not really trying to hear that, but she spews it out anyway. He recommends that she read Gustav Flaubert's model novel Madame Bovary, noting parallels between Carmela and the book's protagonist. That's such a nerdy thing to do. But uh, she returns to the empty family house. Yeah, now it's empty. Now she's completely by herself. We're going to see her go in a downward spiral. I can see it now. I mean, that is just so unfortunate for her. But obviously we get some new characters. Uh, Rusty Milio is a capo in the Lupertazzi family and ally of Little Carmine. We get Robert Wegler, who's AJ's school guidance counselor, who also goes out with Carmella for lunch. Obviously she gets super intimate with damn near everyone she talks to at this point. You know, breaking up with Tony or, or divorcing. It's not breaking up. They're literally married, but we could see a romantic relationship with that like we saw with Furio. Uh, we get Justin and Jason Blondetto, who are the twin sons of Tony Blondetto. Um, we meet Dante Greco as an associate and a soldier in the April crew. So yeah, we're getting to know a little bit more about Tony B and his family life. So that's cool. But, uh, Michael Feach Lamana is the final appearance. He doesn't, I've literally been told that he will not come back to the show. So we don't need to call him back or talk about him. 
He's sent back to prison on a parole violation by Tony, which is hilarious. Obviously, the two people that died were Lorraine Caluso, who was shot by Billy Leotardo on orders from Johnny Sack for not taking up direct to him. And then Jason Evanina was shot on orders from Johnny Sack, presumably by Billy Leotardo or Joey Peeps. So, yeah, that is going to do it for the episode. I'm going to round the clips together, post them for you guys, do all that stuff. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. As always, it has been your boy GCTV. Uh, we'll be doing NBA recaps every night of the week. Uh, maybe not on Friday because I think I'm going to go visit my family in St. Louis. So there's that. Hopefully you guys have a good rest of your day. Uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I watched that movie yesterday. So I'm not going to watch a movie today. But we will review that tomorrow. I kind of got in the spirit with the whole Willy Wonka thing. So yeah, I'm out guys.